Awesome. So, like I said, my name's Dan. I'm an ML engineer in DevRel at Voxel 51. So a good way to follow up that is uh, a quick talk I brought, I put together um, talking about a couple things, but mainly drones, data, and one possible direction that computer vision is going towards in the future. So don't, drones today is obviously, um, as we talk about edge ML, as we talk about these new ways that we can apply existing hardware to AI or vice versa, drones is obviously in the forefront of that. We see that drones being applied in things like agriculture, for looking for um, diseases in the in the plants, things like spreading pesticides um, and things like herbicides as well. Um, we also see them in surveying for construction, um, land masses. There's also search and rescue, um, these for different fire operations. And more and more, as you can see, that drones are just spreading everywhere. And a lot of these are being applied with AI today with object detection models such as uh, YOLOs or ResNets uh, for classification. All these small models are being placed on drones and we're able to see more and more being placed in the drone and we can put more AI in there, that it's just a natural bond. However, with AI, there's always going to need data, especially in computer vision, data feeding into these drones. And we have a, a lot of data sitting from drones, uh, things like this drone. There's also various um, car data sets, overhead pedestrian data sets for drones that exist today. And they give you shots very similar to these ones where we see these overhead stationary drone shots of things like an intersection. Um, another really popular data set is roundabouts or something like this, where it's a town square, where we get these overhead drone shots and we see these bounding boxes. Um, what happens though, is when we try to apply these to real world cases, let's say that it's, whether it's agriculture or some kind of uh, surveillance, what happens is uh, the problem that was described to whoever was collecting to the data by the time it reaches the application has changed. So then we start to see troubling images where maybe I was training on pedestrians on the left with this overhead data set, but now my drone is faced with images like the ones on the right, where maybe the angle has changed and it's not overhead, or there is um, things like the background has drastically changed where before it was a urban park square, now it's dirt or desert or farmland or just a plain green grass background, things that the model had not expected to encounter. Uh, what happens though is, you know, we want to, of course, overcome this in AI, um, but why is this happening? What can we nail down, right? So the main reasons that drone models fail in AI and ML, and I've uh, worked past in the industry and um, seen these models firsthand and, the, the you know, some really great ones and some that flop very hard. And they usually come down to these issues right here. And that could be angle changes, right? Even slight angle changes from something like a 40 degree shot to a 60 degree shot um, can be very different in the eyes of the AI model whenever you're training. Um, another one is distance or height of the drone of data collection, and it's specifically as well as the location of the objects you're trying to detect in these data sets. Um, I can't tell you how many like car data sets or things like that I've seen in the past where the cars are always placed in the center of the data set. So the model just knows to always detect the, the center, right? And you have these models that don't train as efficiently as they should. Um, there's also issues for like time of day, of course, you know, and we've kind of talked about this with the last uh, presenter, which is half awesome, um, that you've run into these uh, things that you're able to change uh, with AI. Some other ones are lens differences, aspect ratios, and undescripted backgrounds, right? That desert background, that dirt background. Um, so what can we do about this? There's two main uh, lines of thinking when it comes to this right now in the uh, drone industry, as well as you know, my one direction I see computer vision going to. The first one is fully synthetic samples. Um, the main two ways that fully synthetic samples are being used today is um, in these gaming engines like Unreal Engine, as well as movie production engines or uh, 3D Blender-like uh, environments. And the pros of this is you're able to obviously escape the camera, right? You can grab from any angle or any height. You're able to set the scene how you want and alter the time of day. And you can have these hyper uh, descriptive backgrounds that enhance the training of your model. Right, so we see in this picture on the bottom right, 
where you have some household objects like crackers and orange juice and things like that on the bottom left here. Um, and we were putting this hyper uh, distracting background for the model to learn exactly where these household objects are within the picture, right? But we're able to frame it however we want as seen in the right picture where we can say where our objects are and then change this hyper descriptive background, right? And I've seen this done in 3D environments, especially with different objects. You can load in 3D like CAD-like objects or models of different things like cars, move them around and set the scene. The cons to this is it's very hard to learn, obviously. Um, it's you know great enough if you have all the skills to do model making and machine learning and training. Um, now to try to be a 3D artist is adding another skill set on top of that that is uh, hard to expect anyone to learn. So it's hard to get into the software. And it's not all the way there for realistic, right? You can't get the same type of models and things like that you can get with things like in images, right? It's hard to get the same resolution or lighting and shadows as it is to obviously get it in the real world. The second way you can go about this is with the new Gen AI Jumpstart. Um, and this is like we were just previously talking with the last presenter, like things like augmented backgrounds, right? When you have these very basic backgrounds, like the dirt or the desert. You want to increase the complexity of the problem so you know that you're detecting the people in it, detecting the kids. It's not about where the background is not great, but you know, actually truly detecting the objects we want. This will make our models apply to more places uh, or more generally across deployment. So what we can do is we can segment out these masks and get inputs and then create these generated backgrounds and you can even now prompt these backgrounds to look a certain way using these diffusion models or dolly models. So, you know, you can say things like city square and things like that. It doesn't just have to be noise, right? But not that noise has been shown to be uh, an issue in the past. Um, some of the issues with this, however, is it can still not be represented in your data. Um, you know, there's a many different lines of thinking about how much of this data should make up your whole data set or should it only be 20% of your samples, should you be doing it to all your samples. So there's not a guarantee to improve your training, right? I think there is um, a lot of sweet spots that people are identifying about, you know, where these breakdowns are matching up for what percentage of your data set should be just synthetic or generated by AI. Um, but there's no promises, right? Nothing that doing here is going to guarantee that your results are going to get better. It's not like you're switching to a better model or uh, anything like that. The next part, as we previously just talked about, is now that we can have these generated samples, we're going to apply Gen AI to pictures. Um, so you can make it winter, you can change it to winter, you can change it to a rainy image, you can play, change it to a sunny image, um, and have these different things incorporated into your data set, recycle this old data from the drone data sets, as well as change the height and angle yourself if you have a collection of images, right? Now you can start to do, um, let me see if this video plays. As NVIDIA has shown here, and I'll skip to the part that I care about, where you can add a set of pictures and build a 3D environment now using these Gen AI models where you can stitch together all the different angles. Now there is some tearing in the images, but this is what we can accomplish with even old data that we've been having. So now you're able to change the height, the angle, the settings of the weather, uh, the seasons, and all these different things uh, that we previously couldn't do with data, right? And so there's a lot you can grab out of your data that previously wasn't there. Of course, there are still some downsides. So this is not the end all be all perfect thing where it's uh, they're, you know, tearing and unintended artifacts as seen in like in the videos where the uh, generated images have not been fully filled in or they're going to mess with the model because of the noise they're adding, um, things like that. And of course, it's not going to be fully representative of what the real world are because it's only still an approximation. And sometimes these can be complex to generate um, if you're not having the machine time to generate as many pictures for during a training or something like that can be complex, right? It becomes expensive machine device. And so what we can we learn from drones that we can apply to everything really is uh, that complex problems are always going to sprout in computer vision. We're going to always have data sets that maybe we have a lot of data there, but the models aren't grabbing on because of these things that we've mentioned before, like the angle has changed in deployment. The season has changed in deployment. How can we get across this? There's always going to be problems like this sprouting up. 
the data collection might not be uh, perfect for an ML engineer, right? Um, they might be bad pictures. They might always be putting it in the middle. Um, I personally have a story where uh, someone was collecting data for a project and for an overhead detection of cars, had pictures of underneath the car, um, which was not going to help us. And, you know, we can, data can be recycled and curated to a better set is something that we can learn from this, right? So how can we enhance our data? How can we transform it to be giving even more complex learning for our models to give better results? And that can be done through Gen AI. And where can you get started with this? 51 plugins is a great way to start looking into how to apply this to your data sets. There is different sets of operators and function functionality that you can add to 51. Uh, using these Gen AI models, using this uh, segmentation, finding, cleaning your data set and curating. It's fully open source. It's community driven. It's fully customizable. There's the GitHub to start looking at 51 plugins if you haven't yet. Um, we even have a Gen AI plugin today made by a community member and member of Voxel 51, Jacob where now you can do the stable diffusion, the Dolly 2 model, and generate pick samples or pictures to add to your data set. We have tons and tons of cool ones planned too that are gonna come out for things like augmenting your data sets and exploring how to apply new ways to your new operators to your data sets. So we're super excited uh, for this coming out soon. I will take a peek at Q and A's. If not, I appreciate you guys uh, sticking along. 